Welcome to the show. Ken, Welcome you look to amazing. The show and you look great. Thank you, thank so, you, thank you. We have an amazing show for you today. We have a special guest, Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings. We're talking all the things that the people want to know, Hurricane Ian Relief. Yes, we make sure to talk about a transportation plan, criminal justice, and what's happening around Orlando. And I'm excited. I'm excited, excited? as well. So you guys stay tuned for this exclusive interview. Stick around. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. You're just in time for Unfiltered. Today's guest needs no introduction as he is the first and only African American to be elected as the mayor of Orlando, Florida. Please welcome to our show the Honorable Mayor Jerry Demings. So I'm glad Woo! to be here. And <laughs> uh, I'm actually the Orange County Mayor. Uh, uh -huh. I don't want Buddy Dye to get upset about that. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> 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 but uh, but we're just privileged to be serving now. We just got reelected to our second term, yeah. and so yeah. which will begin uh, next month. Uh, the Congratulations! Yes. So, Mayor Deming, speaking of being reelected, you have literally cemented yourself as a figure in Black history. So, I, I have to ask, what does that mean to you on a personal level? I've had tremendous role models over the years, mm. who are some of the first I've had the privilege of meeting. Uh, some of our iconic individuals in the African-American community from presidents to uh, people like uh, Benjamin Hooks, uh, who mm -hmm. was uh, on the ground during the civil rights movement, wow. uh, to uh, countless others. And so to have the privilege of serving in so many different roles in our community, uh, it has been a true blessing. Orlando is home for me. This is where I was born and raised. <laughs> and so I'm the the son of uh, two blue collar workers, a mother who cleaned houses for a living, a father who uh, drove taxi cabs for a living. My father turned 100 years old in September. Wow. Uh, mom passed on at uh, nearly 96 years old. And so as a product of those blue collar workers, and you know, when I say it's, I'm very, very humble uh, to be serving in the different roles that I've had now, I've completed uh, 41 years of public service mm, in this community. Wow. Congratulations. Held a lot yeah. of titles. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> from, uh, you know, when I graduated from college, I came back here and went to work as an accountant. Uh, and uh, a year or so after that, I became an Orlando police officer, worked my way up through all of the ranks, became Orlando's first uh, black chief of police and uh, have the dubious distinction of having served as police chief alone. Yeah. My wife was an Orlando police chief. She's the only woman to right. have been wow. police chief right. in Orlando. Went on and um, became the first black sheriff here in Orange mm -hmm. County and now the first black county mayor. So uh, it has truly been quite the ride. Wow, black That's royalty. Awesome. You're black royalty. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm going to jump right in because yes. I have questions. Uh -huh. So the transportation, uh, transportation is your baby. I understand that. And um, you're doing a lot to improve it throughout the city. Now, you said in an interview not too long ago um, that you were talking about the one cent tax initiative. So if that passes, I'm going to say when that passes, how will that impact us? It will be on the ballot. Mm -hmm. on November the 8th, right. and uh, believe it or not, people are already voting. Uh, mm -hmm. Vote by mail has already started. Right. Uh, early voting is going to start in about 24 days from now. But when we uh, think about what it means to our community, it's something that will benefit poor people in our community. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about it, uh, most of the service workers here are low-wage earners. Mm -hmm. right. They just happen to be people of color. Uh, most of them happen to be women uh, who are single with right. children. Yeah. Right. And so for them, we will reduce the cost of their transit. Many of them cannot afford an automobile with the high insurance right. prices that they're paying now and even the high cost of just acquiring an automobile. So right. many of them depend on public transit as mm -hmm. a primary mode of transportation. With this initiative, uh, we will reduce the cost of transit for the low wage earners by at least 50%. Wow. Simultaneous to reducing their cost of transportation, 
what we're doing is creating job opportunities, upward mobility. Mm -hmm. We're giving them back hours in the day because we'll reduce their commute times to and from work. Mm -hmm. And we're also working on uh, housing here, okay. where we have uh, some housing affordability uh, initiatives underway here to deal with the rise in rent prices. And I know we'll talk about that yeah. more during the show, but exactly. we can't solve housing without also solving transportation. We can't mm -hmm. solve the transportation problems without also addressing housing. Right, and mm -hmm. safe transportation at that. That's Feasible correct. Feasible hours. Yes. So, Mayor Demings, for the people that are viewing that may not be as politically savvy, what all falls under this blanket of taxable items? Are we talking about groceries, medications, vehicles? Like, what, what falls under this umbrella? Okay. It, it does not uh, apply to uh, most of the essential grocery items. Mm -hmm. It does not apply to medicine. It does not apply to utility costs. Okay. And um, it only applies to the first $5,000 uh, of a major purchase. So if you buy yeah. an automobile, you will only pay this sales tax on the first $5,000. Oh, okay. And so uh, it doesn't apply to everything. Uh, in fact, the majority of the people who will pay this tax will not just be the people who live here, but uh, the state estimates that over 50 percent, uh, in fact, 51 percent of the people who will pay the tax will be the tourists. Uh, hmm. And they would be paying a tax for something that we need drastically within our community. We're a growing community. Mm -hmm. Orange County in the last decade, by the census data, grew by 25 percent. We are growing at a, a net of nearly 1,000 new residents every week. That puts a lot of pressure on our yeah. infrastructure. Not only are we growing in terms of our population, uh, but the visitation. Mm -hmm. Pre-pandemic, we led North America, and one of, we were one of the top tourist destinations in the world with mm -hmm. 75 to 76 million people coming here. Yeah. In 2021, we had 59.3 million people who came here. To put that number into perspective, right. that same year, New York City had uh, about 33 million people. Wow. Las mm -hmm. Vegas <laughs> had 32 million. We had 59.3. So wow. by far, we're the number one tourist destination mm -hmm. in North America. So with all of those tourists coming in, right. with all of the population growth, yeah. if we do not do something to figure out how we can move people around more efficiently, right. the best way to do that is have multimodal options where we have mass transit infused right. into the conversation at a greater uh, efficiency than what we have today. And so that's what we're working on okay. uh, with this penny sales tax we will be able to double the size of the Lynx bus fleet, cutting down the wait times between buses uh, to 94% um, of the buses will run one hour or less. Right. Uh, the majority of them will run 30 minutes or less with a significant number of the routes, 15 minutes between buses. Mm. Uh, today, that's the exact opposite. 94% yeah. uh, of our bus routes run one hour or more, mm. with many of them uh, taking two hours for people to get to work. Mm -hmm. And I want to give uh, them back some hours in the day so that they can spend more time with their families. They can uh, perhaps use that, if you look at a round trip, uh, anywhere from four to six hours a day you're wasting uh, traveling to and from work. If we can give you back some hours, maybe you can uh, study for a new, and some new training for new jobs that pay you a greater amount of money. You can spend more time with your families. Yeah. So that's what this is all about. That makes sense. Wow. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So let's talk safety real quick because I know that we have to move on. So not too long ago, uh, we know that crime in Orlando, we know that a lot of it, as we hear, is because of gang violence, especially in the downtown areas. Now, you created what's called the Orange County um, Citizen, citizen Safety, safety <clears throat> Test. So how does that help the citizens? How does that work? And how is that going to impact us in the future? You know, as a 38-year law enforcement officer, I got to learn an awful lot about how to respond to crime. And we typically use a four-prong approach. We focus on a prevention. Mm -hmm. We try to stop crime uh, by intervening early in the lives of our youth and having appropriate adult supervision and positive places for them to go and to be mentored. Uh, then we intervene once sometimes young people get involved in things that they have no business being involved in. We have to intervene early and redirect that behavior. 
A thirdly, sometimes we have to do enforcement. Right. Uh, we have to hold people accountable for their actions. And then uh, the, the fourth prong uh, really is all about prosecution, mm -hmm. appropriate prosecution uh, for those who violate our laws. But mm -hmm. I'm all about uh, working with our youth. And so we saw in 2019 a significant spike in violent crime amongst our youth. Yeah. Sadly, we have some youth uh, who were just children, who mm. died as a result Maybe. of gunfire. Yeah. So what we decided to do was intervene, create a task force of volunteer citizens who would come together, look at the issue, and then make some recommendations. So they made recommendations uh, to the Board of County Commission. The Co Board of County Commission allocated a couple of million dollars uh, to work with community-based organizations. Right. Uh, these are faith-based mm -hmm. organizations and others where these youth who uh, are disproportionately uh, exposed to violence. Uh, we wanted to work with authentic uh, messengers within those neighborhoods, people who live where they live, who would work with them to redirect some of the negative uh, activities that they were involved in. Mm -hmm. And so that process is well underway, right. uh, and uh, it's, it has worked. We have seen uh, actually a decline in violent crime uh, amongst our youth. Wow. And the sheriff and the police chief are telling me that this year overall uh, uh, violent crime, overall crime is, is going to be down in 2022, yeah. even though we've had some uh, examples of some violent incidents. Mm -hmm. But the goal is to overall reduce that. So I'm highly encouraged as a result of that. I don't want people of color to be disproportionately incarcerated. Right. Um, so if we work with uh, our different uh, community-based organizations, we can, we can eradicate some of the things that we have seen occurring in the past. And especially when it's people that are boots on the ground that can actually touch the youth, the youth programs, which are very important to the city. Well, Mayor Demings, we have so much more to talk to you about, but we have to take a short break, you guys. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Mayor Jerry Demings.